There is another way of extending the integral. So, let us look at that. What is that way? So, a Riemann integral on a b to r bounded. So, we defined uh, with respect to a partition p the lower sum and the upper sums, right. They were all less than or equal to this. And as the uh, you took the supremum, right. So, this was uh, you look at the supremum of L p f is less than or the equal to infimum of u p f. And whenever these two were equal that was called the integral of a to b f x d x. But the important thing in this was the in the upper sum or the lower sum. Say for example, in the lower sum if the partition p was x 0 less than x 1 less than x n equal to v, then you looked at the lowest value you were approximating by looking at the lowest height of the function into the length of the interval, right. So, uh, the So, the idea was that you look at the length of that sub interval, ok. At some time point somebody thought, so uh, what we are doing is you are given an interval a to b on the line and you are trying to measure the length of that interval. You measure the length by looking at saying that this is an interval b minus a. So, length is b minus a. So, that is the length of this interval. So, this is i, ok. But ok, I think probably that may be a nice idea to introduce. So, length on the class of all intervals taking value 0 to infinity. So, length of an interval i is defined as b minus a if i has n points. a and b otherwise you write it as plus infinity. If it is unbounded interval the length is defined as plus infinity. But this is something I can change this notion of length. So, what I am here when the end point is a and b I am saying it is b minus a but let us take alpha a function on real line to real line which is monotonically increasing. So, let let us take a function right. Then what is wrong in saying I define the length of interval i to be equal to alpha b minus alpha a if i has end points a b. What is wrong in saying that if I have the length to be equal to alpha b minus alpha a? That means what? At every point, I am giving the weightage different, different weightage to every point, right? Where the earlier the length was b minus a, then now the length is alpha b minus, and if alpha is equal to identity function, then it is also length if alpha is identity function then it is original length right. So, the idea came that when defining that upper sum and the lower sums u p f let us define the upper sum with respect to a new length function alpha. So, what is it going to be the definition? It is the maximum value of the function as it is the height remains the same, but the base length changes to alpha x i
minus alpha of x i minus 1 and summation i equal to 1 to n. Change the length of intervals and similarly the lower sum with respect to this alpha I can define it as sigma m i alpha x i minus alpha of x i minus 1. Still the same property remains true L p f alpha is still less than u p f alpha. Is that okay? Because these two quantities are same, the weightage of the length is same, is small m i and capital M i. So, that still remains the same. So, still I can ask, can I, what will happen if uh, refine a partition? Because if you keep in mind, the, in the lower sums and the upper sums, when you refine a partition, length does not play any part. It is a supremum or the inferior that change. So, same properties of lower sums and upper sums will remain true whenever you measure the length in terms of a monotonically increasing right continuous function, right? monotonically increasing function. So, this, uh, <coughs> so you can look at what is the supremum of lower sums, what is the inferior of upper sums and whenever they are equal, you will get a new integral which is defined with respect to a weighted measurement of length on the line. Right? So, this is possible and this is what is called Riemann Stilges integral. Okay? So, let me uh, okay. so, okay. let me uh, because not many changes come except for a few places, otherwise the whole theory goes uh, as smoothly as the earlier one. So, that is what we are, I'm, oh yeah, I think. So, let us uh, start with uh, a function a b to r and alpha is a monotonically increasing function on a b. Given a partition, look at the inferior, look at the supremum like we do it for upper sum and lower sums. Now, how is the new upper sum defined? How is the new lower sum? Minimum value into alpha x i minus alpha x i minus 1. So, lower sum, similarly the upper sum with respect to the, is a weight you are attaching to each. See, why this is important uh, in probability and statistics, uh, you assign different weights to different points, right. So, you will have probability distributions which come via such kind of uh, functions, uh, monoton functions and the expected value of uh, the functions will be with respect to uh, the weighted measurement of length of that interval. So, that is why this is important from statistics point of view and mathematics point of view it is a generalization of the Riemann integral. Okay. So, upper sum and lower sum. So, uh, upper, so you prove those properties that the upper lower sum is always less than or equal to upper sum that is not a difficult job. There is the same thing, same proof continues. Okay. You can define upper uh, uh, Riemann uh, Silger integral, lower Riemann as a supremum and the inferimum of the upper and you say the function is Riemann still j integrable. If the supremum of the lower sums with respect to alpha is equal to the inferimum of the upper sums with respect to alpha, all everything goes on smoothly. So, you say that is the integral and common value is called the integral. Okay. Probably, uh, all the theorems go as in Riemann integral except probably some points. I will point out where the things go a bit. So, for example, upper is always lower than the uh, bigger than lower and the function is integrable 
whenever the difference can be made small because that is the only thing that makes a difference alpha length of doesn't contribute anything actually so all those theorems same proofs go over only with, uh, difference in the proofs will be that instead of writing xi minus xi minus 1 we will be writing alpha xi minus alpha xi minus 1 that is all nothing more ok. So, all those proofs go ok. So, here is something if every continuous function is Riemann Seljus integrable like in Riemann integral we proved that if f is continuous on a b then it is integrable right. So, what was the proof basically? The proof basically was that because f is defined on a closed boundary interval it is continuous. So, it is uniformly continuous. So, given epsilon there is a delta say that whenever two points are close by distance delta their distance right f of x i uh, the, the values are also close right. So, now what are the upper sums and lower sums for a partition you look at the points upper sum minus the lower sum capital M i minus small m i what is that if the function is continuous capital M i is attained at some point small m i is attained at some point right and if the and that means in the interval x i minus 1 to x i right capital M i is f of something in that interval small m i is f of something. So, if your length of the partition is less than delta then the values will be less than epsilon because of uniform continuity. So, given uh, f is uniformly f is continuous by uniform continuity given epsilon choose a delta choose a partition whose norm is less than delta. So, you will get capital M i minus small m i will be less than epsilon into the length. So, that will be small. So, that was a proof. So, in the same proof if f is continuous uniform continuity everything makes sense. So, what we will be doing instead of multiplying by x i minus 1 to x i will be multiplying by alpha times x i minus alpha times x i minus 1 same proof no change will come. So, every continuous function will also be Riemann Stilges integrable with respect to alpha for the same proof if f is continuous no, no change comes ok. The change comes supposing f is not continuous it is only a bounded function right and alpha is monotonically increasing we know that for a bounded function Riemann integral need not exist right. So, the modified theorem for Riemann Silge integral is if that alpha function alpha which is monotonically increasing is continuous every discontinuity point of f then it becomes Riemann Silge integrable. So, the discontinuity of f is taken care by the continuity of the point uh, continuity of the monotonically increasing function ok alpha is monotonically increasing. So, it is discontinuous at the most at countably many points we know that right. So, the only change comes with it is uh, continuous at every point of discontinuity of f then. So, that is for any bounded for Riemann integrable functions we said that every monotone function is Riemann integrable right. For Riemann still j you require f to be uh, alpha to be mon a continuous not only monotonically increasing you require also it to be a continuous function. We will not prove all these terms, but I am just pointing out the differences between uh, the two uh, statements of the theorems ok. So, that is uh, properties of uh, Riemann Silje other uh, facts they all continue to hold if f and g are Riemann Silje integrable f plus g is Riemann Silje integrable because the sums will split anyway right into two parts. So, length does not uh, change those property. So, Riemann integral of f plus g is Riemann integral of f plus Riemann integral of g same property holds right. 
scalar multiple integrable comes out f less than g then same property holds so similar properties hold not much change comes so that's why uh, not uh, proofs are not very interesting uh, for all this so, but will not anyway uh, uh, go into the proofs of these things so the basic fact is that you can extend riemann integral in two different ways one look at function being unbounded on a bounded domain or function being bounded on a unbounded uh, interval that gives you one set which is called uh, improper integration or you can keep the function values as it is but change the measurement of length by some monotonically increasing function right that gives you riemann stieltjes integration and uh, the two have uh, different uh, the, so the two branches which are um, okay i think i i don't probably i should just say that uh, this uh, riemann stieltjes integral plays a important part in uh, further topics like measure theory and uh, Uh, probability and statistics it will come again and again there and of course improper integral comes in a disguised form of uh, gamma functions and uh, gamma function and cauchy distributions and so on or normal distributions and so on okay so you will require those thing to exist so that is uh, integration on a of one variable so next time we'll look at integration of functions of two variables okay that is also important from uh, many subjects point of view so we'll look at integration of functions of several variables next time okay